Death Demeter 1, 2, and 2, and it's list day. Ah, yes, list day. And today we're going to be looking at the top 10 bad cards in good archetypes. So yeah, there's this weird phenomenon in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! where we can have a perfectly solid, well-built archetype in this game that is part of a tier 1 deck and end up not using all of its support because some of the cards in the archetype are just oddly not good. The archetype works perfectly fine without them, hence the fact that they are still tier 1 and tier 2 decks and are competitively viable, so they clearly don't need the card. It's just really, really strange that a deck that is so powerful and well-constructed would have a card in it that is seemingly useless, or at the very least, so mediocre the deck would just never play it. So let's look at those cards, because they're at least kind of interesting, I suppose. Before we get to the list, though, I just want to make sure you guys know that I have a second channel called Enemy Controller. It's uh, It's been uploading for, like, I think almost two weeks now. It's got a, a bunch of fun videos on there right now. We're doing Let's Plays of Pokemon Fire Red, Horizon Zero Dawn, and I Love You Colonel Sanders, a finger-licking good dating sim. So if you want to see me and my friends screw around playing games of various quality, go check that out. It's a lot of fun, I guarantee it. Without further ado, let's look at some bad cards in good decks. Number 10, Blackwing, Ebrothos the Megaquake. I think I'm saying that right. You could probably put half the Blackwing monsters on this list because they got tons of really weird and seemingly mediocre cards in their archetype to the point where you almost like couldn't even build a legal deck by playing like one of each copy of all their cards. I think there's just more than 60 at this point. So we pick this mess of a card. What do? This level 7 dark wing beast monster has the following effect. Cannot be special summoned. Oh well, there you, there you go, folks. That's... That's why. It's a synchro spam deck. What do you, what do you expect me to do? Tribute some in this? <laughs> You'll get an effect off with uh, the Whirlwind, won't you? So yeah, that's already really bad. It's incredibly disrespectful! But anyway, this card cannot destroy an opponent's monster by battle. That's... that's an odd one. If this card battles a monster after damage calculation, return that monster to the hand. So it's like a tribute summon for a Neospatian Grand Mole, and Grand Mole is actually the better card. Bouncing after damage calc means that you could still potentially lose the monster, and you'll still take the damage. It'd be really nice to avoid that kind of scenario for your two tribute normal summon, and have it bounce before damage calc. But no, I guess we can't have anything nice. Also, it does have an ignition effect where once per turn you can make this thing lose 1000 attack power to bounce all spells and traps that your opponent controls to their hand. So it is a one-sided giant tornade in order to lower its attack power permanently. That is okay. However, it's just obviously not worth the clumsy rigmarole it took you in order to get this out in your Synchro Spam deck. Bora the Spear Turbo. So yeah, I don't, I don't know what they're thinking with this one. Uh-oh, sense and a theme. Number nine is Evil Swarm Capella. Cop Capella. Cap Acapella. Do dum ba ba do ba ba Cannot be special summoned, but why do? In my rank four spam deck. I suppose the deck is slightly anti-meta, depending on the meta, so maybe a tribute summon gimmick kinda works? No. If this card leaves the field by your opponent's card effect or by battle, you can take control of one monster your opponent controls till the end of the turn. Level six, so you got a tribute for it again. At least it's not two this time. I guess that's why it's number nine and not 10. Again, a weird tribute summon in a deck that focuses on spamming extra deck monsters. I knew that was gonna be a shitty story. And it's not even a level you would really wanna use in your evil swarms. You wanna make level fours so you can make Ophion, the point of the deck. I don't know what you're trying to do with this thing, but it's certainly not play evil swarms. Really, really just super mediocre. Number eight. Here we go, a deck I have no idea how it works. TG Blade Blaster. This level 10 Earth Machine Synchro Monster has the following effect. Made of one Tuner Synchro Monster and one or more other Synchro Monsters. Oh, ew. It's shooting Quasar Dragon. That's bad. Synchroing with your Synchros is a clumsy thing to do but at least one could make the argument that TGs, among other ducks like Scraps and Synchrons, at least can do it. They are capable of the function. Be nice if you didn't have to, though, because that is a big waste of resources. But if you're going to Synchro with Synchros, you better get something that's a bomb-ass effect and not whatever ridiculous thing this does. During either player's turn, if your opponent would target it with a spell or trap effect, you can discard a card to negate that activation. 
It doesn't even destroy it, so if it's not like a, uh, if it's not destined for graveyard because it's like a continuous spell or a continuous trap, tough titty. Tough titties. You're just nagging yourself. Best case scenario, it's a one for one negate uh, on something that your opponent should have never done to begin with. Because if your opponent reads that, that this thing cannot be targeted by spells and traps, your opponent's just not gonna target it with a spell and trap. As the years go on, this card gets worse because we have more and more generic options in our extra decks for monsters that can get rid of this thing. We have a link to that'll do it. However, you can do this cheese. Once per turn during either player's turn as a quick effect, you can banish a TG monster from your graveyard to banish this face up card to then return it during your next standby phase to the field. It's a giant wind up rabbit. So ah, you can da you can you can dodge the Cerberus. How real cute. At best, an annoying monster to deal with. Not an impossible monster to deal with. Honestly, it's big 3300 attack power is its its best attribute. You are literally going to synchro summon anything else. Number seven, Curse of the Shadow Prison. This support card for the Shadal archetype, not actually a Shadal card itself, that should begin to tell you something, is a field spell. We are very spoiled in the modern era of Yu-Gi-Oh, where our field spells are just like rotas for our decks and actually do something we would like them to do instead of just glorified Umis. It's incredibly disrespectful. Each time a Shadal monster is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, by a card effect, you can put a spellstone counter on this thing. Ew, a counter. Nice. Nice. All monsters your opponent control lose 100 attack power for a counter on this thing. That's. <laughs> ah. Uh, this came out in Duelist Alliance. It's also during your opponent's turn only, so you can't even utilize the attack reduction during your battle phase. That's oddly clumsy for what amounts to a pretty lousy field spell. But wait, there's more! Kids of all sizes love the cuddly titty bear. Tough titties. Every time you fusion summon, you can remove three spell stone counters from this thing to use an opponent's face-up monster that's an appropriate fusion material for whatever fusion you are attempting to do. Ah, oh, there you go, it's the world's clumsiest super poly. Why don't you just run super poly? That card's actually good. I see what they're going for here. Uh, should also have fusion spells that are like every kind of spell in the in the game so they have tons of options for fusion summoning and the fusions are all kind of semi-generic so you have options and things you can make so using your opponent's stuff seems like a good idea however uh you're never going to be able to use this turn one because your opponent doesn't have anything and turn two you need to fusion summon like two times to get enough things on this stupid card in order to use that third fusion summon to use your opponent's stuff which, uh, oh, you're blowing through a lot of resources in order to get this thing live in any kind of early gameplay. Or you could just not run it in your Shadal deck and be better off. Like run an Invoked Engine or something. You know, something good. All right, let's keep the, the ball rolling with the bad field spell support with Cage, Coliseum of the Gladiator Beasts. Fucking idiot. Gladiator Beasts are a battle phase archetype, so it makes sense. They'd have a shitty Umi for their field spell. Not that they would run it. Place a counter on this card each time a monster is special summoned from either player's deck to the field. <laughs> Probably normally talking about your glad beasts when they tag out. But okay, at least it's generic enough to cover the one your opponent's going to be doing. All glad beasts gain 100 attack and defense for each counter on this thing. Whoopty freaking do. And that's it. That's all it does. Oh, wait. No, there is one last effect. If this card would be destroyed by a card effect, you can discard another copy of itself from your hand to save its life. Or you could have just played that other copy, because is it really that big a deal you're losing the attack boost? Matter of fact, why is your opponent wasting their spell trap removal on this? This is just super archaic and harks back to an era where your field spell didn't do anything except give you a dumb attack boost. It's incredibly disrespectful! Unless, of course, it does something else. Which it doesn't. If you want well thought out, educated content about the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, subscribe to DZ for Simu or APS or something like that. If you want to watch content of a guy dumping on cards he barely understands the decks they work in, that's your Davinator right there. <laughs> Perform a pale five rainbow magician or whatever the hell this thing is called. Davy no likey these two color cardies. Six out of 10, too much text. Level one light spellcaster monster, pendulum scale 12. Holy peepees. 
That's a big number for pendulum scales. I don't know what level 11 monster you are pendulum summoning. <laughs> Is Nibiru an 11? <laughs> pendulum effect. You cannot pendulum summon except from your extra deck. Oh wait, never mind. That level 11 is stuck in your hand, even though like no main deck level 11 can barely be special summon. There's barely level 11s as there is. Why is this a 12? With Master Rule 4 and then Master Rule 5, this card just is just not even remotely close to being playable. Without Electromite, because that shit's banned, and without going through a bunch of hoops, probably after you already pendulum summoned, you probably don't have enough open link zones to even summon a bunch of crap from your extra deck as it is. Clumsy. Why though? Because it's the world's worst mystic mine. Based on the number of set cards each player has, apply one of these two effects. Goose egg. All monsters that player controls cannot attack or activate their effects. It's freaking mystic mine. Four or more? Wait, what happened to one through three? Double the, the original attack of everything you got. Okay, cool. So at least you set one, it turns off that garbage effect. The pendulum scales are now in the spell and trap zone, so you already have limited space in your back row as it is. Feels bad, man. But if you can at least set a solemn judgment or something, you can at least use your effects. And then it's monster effect is stupid, it just lets you get it out of the grave and stick it on the pendulum scale. <laughs> Imagine a tuner monster that told you you can't synchro summon. That's what this is. This is ridiculous. We're just, we're just cruising through it, baby. Here we go. Here's Electromite. I was wondering where he went. Wait, wait, wait a second. Something's not right here. Elemental Hero Electrum. Here's a card I've probably don't think I've ever seen before, for a good reason. Elemental Heroes are a pretty solid rogue deck, and have been tier 1 at times throughout the history in Yu-Gi-Oh. They have tons of support, just like those Black Wings, where they just have so many you probably could, couldn't even play a deck with one of each copy. Not that you would. Which means, not only do they have tons of good cards to make them a good deck that has a lasting presence in the meta, it also means they have tons of garbage and dumpster fire cards for us to, to, to make fun of. Like this one. This level 10 light warrior fusion monster is made of a bunch of very specific things. Avian, Burstronix, Bubble Man, and Clayman. It's like Jade and Yuki was just like, I'm a fusion summon with all of my deck. Nice. nice. And what do you get? Uh, that stupid Dor Dorado ritual monster where it's just all the attributes. And you can't cheese it out of your extra deck, it must be fusion summoned. The best effect that it has though is when it is fusion summoned, it shuffles all banished cards back into the deck. So I guess if you had dug with your pot of desires, hey, you don't have to worry about your Nake 9 no more. Or if you're playing against, I don't know, Paul on a, a remote duel and he's hitting you with Gren Maju big number. I'm playing Gren Maju. You can counter with your Electrum. 4D chess, baby. And it gains 300 attack for each uh, attribute your opponent's monsters share with this thing. And that's why it's cool that it has like all the attributes, except dark and divine. In other words, it's a 2900 beat stick that was extremely hard to make. <laughs> Imagine just not making dark law and heroes. Like what's... Oh man, you guys ready for Salty Dave? This one is, this one's personal. Center Frog. When I saw the artwork of the card, I noticed it was a level 2 and it was a water, and looking at the Japanese kanji, I could just say, hmm, I bet you anything that says aqua. Here we go. It's even got stats like dupe frog. What can this thing do? Please, please search my swap frog. <laughs> no! Cannot be used as fusion, synchro, link, or exceed material. What? Imagine a frog monster that you can't make toad with. The Wido. Okay, it better be a bomb effect. If it's normal or flip summoned, you can change the defense position. Nice, it's, it's Summoner Monk. All right, here we go. Summon a monster from my deck. Do it, buddy. Uh, no, that's, that's not what it does. Basically, once per turn, you can use this thing's effect to target a monster on your opponent's side of the field and then give it to them under their control in a, in a place adjacent to the targeted monster. Then, if they control two of these things, uh, you take control of all the monsters that were between them physically on the board. Can you make Toad with those things? Probably not. Is it a fun effect? Yes, it's certainly interesting. Why is it called Center Frog when it's best played on the flanks? Why isn't it Flank Frog? Putting it in the center doesn't make any sense. And why can't I make Toad with a frog monster? That's stupid. Dave's getting mad already. <laughs> We're just gonna keep moving. Convoluted freaking mess of an effect. 
Number two, Salamangrate, Emerald Eagle. Oh, nice. Nice. Salamangrates, that's a great Link control deck. How can a Link monster, which is clearly a Link monster because it's blue, be bad in that deck? Oh wait, there's no arrows. This is a ritual monster. Why? Why? You know what that Link spam deck needed? A ritual monster. You know what they really needed? A ritual monster that gets its effect by being summoned by using the ritual monster. Level 8 Cybers, Fire Ritual. When this card is ritual summoned using an Emerald Eagle you control, which means you already had a ritual summon the first copy. That's really bad and a waste of advantage. At least it emulates the I Link Summoned Wolf with a Wolf gimmick the deck does. So that's at least kind of on theme. It's not good, but at least it makes some sort of design sense. All for a, a, a board nuke of all your opponent's special summon monsters. Uh. And then you can use its ignition effect to tribute one Salamangre Link monster you control to turn this thing into Shell Shit All Construct, where it just kind of auto kills stuff in battles. I'm gonna neg myself to summon it by summoning it with something I already summoned and then tribute something I already summoned to just, just have a shitty battle if it- why? Imagine you're not gonna have any cards at all by the time you get done using any of this. It better have been an absolute monumental play when you hit the field. Is the card bad? No. Is it bad in the deck that it was shoved into? Absolutely, because the deck has literally no way of accommodating it effectively. Half the monsters on your board are gonna be Link monsters that don't even have a level, so you couldn't even easily summon the first one. It's what a mess. I love it though. I love it because it doesn't make any freaking sense to even exist. All right, we got a dishonorable mention. It's Malakota. Malabranch of the Beringa Base. Talk about a weird ritual monster in a deck that doesn't make any sense for it. Malakota gets stuck into Burning Abyss for some odd reason. The only reason why he's a dishonorable mention and not on the list is because he's level 6, all the Burning Abyss are level 3s, and they get their effects in the graveyard, so worst case scenario, you're ritual summoning this thing, dumping its materials, and getting something for it. That's cute. His on-field effect is pretty mediocre, but hey, honestly, you're probably just using him to get crap in the grave, so it is what it is. And uh, at least his ritual spell actually saw some play. However, I will like to point this out. This card is so mediocre and not good in its own deck that its ritual spell saw play without the ritual monster. Like, they didn't even just tech a copy in just in the off chance you made the thing. It's not worth it. I would rather kneecap the ritual spell and only use half of its abilities because it's not worth sticking this brick in. <laughs> what? Thank you so much guys for watching the video. If you guys want to help support the channel, check out my links down in the description below. I've got links to the Discord, Facebook, and Patreon if you want to get in touch with me, help with the lists, things like that. Or if you want to save some money, you can head over to Metamat's website, use my code TROLLMETA at checkout. You can save 10% off a custom cloth playmat like one of these bad boys. Or if you want to waste your money on expensive cardboard, use my TCG player link in the description below and put off your financial obligations. Alright, so uh, how the hell are we going to top any of these? Because a lot of these are just really, really weird in the decks they're meant for. If they're even really truly meant for the decks they're stuck in. Cyber Barrier Dragon. <laughs> You know what my fusion deck needs that is heavily based on an OTK strategy? Just go fast, hit the field, blow stuff up, punch for game, and if all goes south, make infinity and make your opponent's next turn an absolute living nightmare? This weird semi-nami monster you summon with a trap card. With a trap card. Think about that for a sec. 800 attack, 2800 defense. It's a probably objectively worse than the cyber dragon you use to make it. Also that once per turn, your opponent's next attack while this thing is in attack position is negated. You'd almost be better off just keeping it in defense mode because its butt is so big. Can you put it, can you do, oh, it doesn't do anything. But well, what's the trap card do? Hey, it's a normal trap, you can get it with trap trick. That's neat. Tribute one cyber dragon. Special summon one cyber barrier dragon from your hand or, or deck. All it does is play the barrier dragon. It summons from the deck. You'll never play this in Cyber Dragons. You have no reason to play this in Cyber Dragons. This has got that weird anime BS all over it. It's in the it's in the deck because the anime guy played it once. 
That's why there's so many cards in this game like that. Why, why do they even bother? It's so bad. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this list. I had a lot of fun with this one. I don't know if you can tell, but my energy was real high on this. I just, I don't know, I just, I just really like this one because some of these cards are just really goofy. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. And remember, guys, if you don't troll the meta who will, I'll see you guys over at Enemy Controller. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Well, looks like they made it through the video, but you'd still be a slacker if you didn't subscribe up there. Maybe you should check out one of these other videos. Maybe then you'd actually be a decent opponent for me.